Is it possible to have desires and still be able to ascend? Is it true that the desires are wrong and we shouldn't have them? And if so, what is the solution? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sylvia Salo and I help lightworkers and starseeds to remember who they are. And today I want to talk about desires and how they interplay with the ascension dissension journey. So we have different bodies that consist of different frequency and intensity of light. Of course, we are familiar with the physical body, which is the densest, right? That's why we can see it in the third dimension. But beyond it, we have many more layers, just like an onion. And one of those bodies is that astral body. And this is really the realm of desires. We are all familiar with the astral realm. This is where we go when we go to sleep. In most cases, we travel there, we are experiencing all kinds of situations and certain impulses are being played out within the astral realm, which is also the fourth dimension. So it's just the one level above us. And when we have lots of desires, it tends to pull us into the astral realm. So what happens at a moment when we die? we have two different impulses at a soul level. One is towards the human life and the further incarnations. And it's typically because we haven't left out all those desires that we wanted to. So we go to the astral realm and then we come back. And then we go again to the astral realm and back. But there is another impulse which attracts us to the spiritual worlds. The astral realm isn't yet like the spiritual world in that sense of like exalted in the highest possible form and way. So this other impulse within the soul attracts us to higher spiritual worlds where we are devoid of desires. And this is the reason why many um, beliefs say that we shouldn't have any desires. We have to also understand that there are different forms of desires. So when we have those so-called like low desires, which are normal, like we have to have them. We have to have certain desires because otherwise we wouldn't be creating anything in this physical reality. We wouldn't be building any you know, societies. We wouldn't be doing anything truly if we were completely detached from it. So having those desires is not a negative thing. It's just a matter of where we are in that soul cycle. So are we still on the journey of descending deeper into the matter? And then those desires, they serve as a vehicle to keep coming back here, which is a good thing because, as I said, we have to build up this third dimension. Or are we on the journey of ascension? where we are disconnecting from the matter and slowly climbing up through having more spiritual desires and then eventually having no desires at all. So it all depends. It's not like one of them is wrong and the other one is right. We just have to be aware what they do. So those desires, they are more having like a feminine nature. They are connected to our sacral chakra. And so these are those desires of, um, I don't know, having a bigger house or a bigger car or something that's connected to the physical body, to the physical reality. Many people come to spirituality through those low desires. They come to spirituality through the law of attraction. The law of attraction is nothing else that you have lots of desires and you want to make them happen. But in that higher exalted form, you realize that you don't have to like try to attract anything. You speak your words into existence. You say, I want this, I create this, and it happens through you instantly. There are no more steps of manifestation and so on. But if someone is attracted to spirituality through the law of attraction, this is where the matter meets the spirit. And this is truly when that ascension slowly begins. 
or uh, an invitation into spirituality it could be somebody is really focused on their physical form going to the gym and caring about how they look or eating healthy food all these things are just an invitation to slowly start opening the soul to a different form of desires eventually after those die out and so this is that like feminine sacred creation and Ariel this stands on this without it like there would be really not much happening you know we could be just like sitting in the cave and meditating or what or not even because it's a desire that's an attachment as well to a meditation practice whereas we we have those so-called low desires the reason I call them as a low desires because they correspond to the lower chakras especially to the sacral chakra eventually we our desires evolve and we ascend into the higher chakra. After the higher heart chakra opens, you start to notice a visible shift in your desires. Suddenly, it will not be so much about, um, you know, having a bigger house or something. You will naturally, over time, gradually, want to honestly you know, help other people or help your family or be there for others. So you will start to feel that impulse to share, to teach, to heal, to do whatever it is that your soul wants you to do. You start to align with a higher design that is within you. And so those slow desires will eventually transform themselves. And what is important to understand that this cannot be manipulated. Like we cannot just decide, oh, I don't have any desires and I'm done. No. Because like you cannot, uh, you know, you cannot fake spiritual things. You cannot fake your growth. So the only way is that we naturally, over time, stop desiring certain things. And we start to develop more of those spiritual desires, which still are desires. But they are able to already start like pulling us towards those higher spiritual realms. Not the astral realm, but the ones beyond that. The soul has different elements within it. And when we die, actually, this is quite complicated stuff, but to give you a little picture, a little overview, is that different elements within the soul will gravitate to different dimension. And so there is like when, for instance, when people talk to ghosts, it's not actually the soul of the person. It's just like some residual energy likely trapped somewhere because of some desires that is kind of like living its own life. Like those desires through that so-called ghost needs to find some kind of fulfillment. Desires always need fulfillment. They need to be somehow lived through. And so when we have those desires, when we, when we die and let's say we disconnect like from that astral portion of us and then we start coming back here we connect again to those desires that we have and we will have to live them through anyway and so we either like follow those desires this is like what the maturity of humankind is of course doing and it's a good thing it needs to be done like that to create civilization and keep coming back here into the third dimension so it's a good thing and so we live through all those desires, like I want this, I make it happen, I attract it, I decide and it will happen, like it's lots of like I want this, I want this and I want a better thing and better thing, which is good because as you have noticed maybe in your life, it triggers your deeper spiritual awakening and it actually goes hand in hand with your ascension. And as I said, over time, naturally, you will not desire certain things anymore. But that's important. It has to happen naturally. We cannot just decide, I don't want anything. Because that comes from a place of denying the matter, the physical reality, the physical body, the physical form. So my advice is be really honest with what you desire. And likely you might have a mixture of those slow desires and those spiritual desires. It's okay to, you know, it's not just like 100% this or 100% that. Sometimes yes, but from a certain degree it will be both. 
and so be honest with what those desires are. And it's okay to seek that fulfillment of those desires. And naturally, you will notice, oh, I'm not attracted to this anymore. And over time, your set of values and your attraction point will change completely. And also, when you tap into the childlike innocence and purity, you are able to find a healthy relationship with the physical form. So when you look at some child that of certain age especially, who let's say plays with toys and just enjoying their time and you know and just like maybe running around in the sun and then picking up some toys and like playing with many things at once and playing with the imagination, the child is not attached to any particular toy, depending on the age of the child, of course. And the child is able to like think like, oh, now I want to create this, now I want to do this, now I want to play this. But those toys are not owning the child. And it's the same for us. This is that healthy relationship. If, let's say, the need for a bigger house or more money, and this depends from which level, you know, if you don't have any, like, basic needs met, it's completely different and this conversation maybe doesn't even make sense and you have to get them met, there's no other way. There's no spiritualizing around it really. But once you have a certain, you know, needs met, then it's like, I don't know, have wanting a bigger house should not own your soul. It should not enslave your soul so that you put yourself into situations where are, which are maybe not aligned with your life purpose at all. But because you want it, you kind of um, put your attention, your time, your energy towards that goal. And eventually you will be able to make it happen. But who you will become on the journey of it. But if you were like the child, you would be like, okay, I want a bigger house. I want it for my family. I want us to have a beautiful, safe, clean, light space where everyone feels good. And I want this. I have this vision for my family, but I'm not attached to it. I, it doesn't own me. I don't, I don't want a bigger house because of my ego or because other people have it or because we live in that moment in time when we should want more and more and more. No. You, you are like the child who is playing with different toys, like, now I'm going to create this. And there's just that pure, joyful creation. And because I am in that joyful, easeful state, and in that beautiful relationship towards what I want, it doesn't own me, it doesn't enslave me. We can co-create and we can create it with ease, and likely you will open up new opportunities, how that could even happen. So remember, it's not about shutting down your desires by force. You will have to open up that Pandora box, maybe in a different lifetime, but you will. It's more about like acting on it, finding that fulfillment and naturally evolving out of it. And at the same time, maintain the childlike innocence and purity, the joy of creation. Remember when you were a child and you were just like playing or imagining things in your mind. And it was like, that was everything, it was absolute bliss. Like none of those imaginations or toys owned you. You had a fun with it, you could use it. You, in other terms, like you can use the physical form and don't be afraid of it. The problem is when it starts to own the soul. That creates like biggest attachments to this physical reality that feel really heavy. Let me know in the comments below if this topic resonates with you and if you have been on this journey when you were maybe slowly like growing out of certain desires but still valuing those so-called lower desires because you realize that you it's important to have a beautiful connection to the physical form. So let me know in the comments below and if you like this video please subscribe to my youtube channel like and share this video and i see you next time